Here's a definitive ranking of the honors classes at most US high schools. So I know each high school is different, but in general, a lot of high schools seem to offer these courses from a lot of the students I polled and asked. Um, so whether it's an honors course, advanced course, or pre-AP course, whatever your school likes to call them, I'm here today to rank them. And I have personally taken um, every single one of these courses here, I believe. So we're here to get started, let's go. So first of all, starting off with honors algebra one, this is the very first um, honors class that I've taken. I've actually taken this class in seventh grade, which is uh, somewhat common at my high school, or at least at my middle school when I took this class. And honestly, it's gonna go in the light work category. I think especially if you're taking this as an eighth grader where your coursework is a little bit lighter or a seventh grader, you know, your coursework is a little bit lighter. And so contextually speaking, you've got a lot more time to put into honors algebra one, or even if you're taking it as a freshman, that's a lot better than taking some of these other later courses like pre-calc um, or algebra two, where you're taking it as a sophomore and junior year of high school, where things are just a little bit more tough and you have less time on your hands. And honestly, the concepts are pretty light in algebra one. It's pretty much an intro high school math course for a reason. And, and I think it kind of goes, goes to show there. Now, honors geometry, I've seen a lot of people really complain about this. Either they've really enjoyed the class and they thought it was easy or they thought that the class was super, super difficult. I think for most people I saw though, it's still gonna go in the light work category. I think what makes this course just a little bit more difficult than Algebra 1 though, just a little bit, is proofs. I've seen a lot of, this comes some of the smartest people I know um, when I've taken calculus, you know, a higher level math course with them. Um, they've, they've still complained about proofs because you take these math courses maybe because you're STEM oriented and then you get to proofs within geometry, which is more like a written form of, of proving, essentially what's why they're called proofs, um, proving why the math is right. And so I guess that to kind of have that written format makes this class a little bit tougher. And so this class could easily go in the mid category if that's something you think that you would struggle with. And proofs tended to be uh, a pretty big chunk of the entire year, the entire class's content. Now, honors biology, this is a class typically taken by freshmen. And honestly, I think this is gonna be in the mid category. I just feel like biology had a little bit more content to cover than algebra one and geometry. And honestly, while certain concepts in biology like ecosystems and evolutions tend to be easy, which are more environmental things, a lot of the content in this class is mainly cells and cellular structures and DNA and genetics and all that. And that's about like, I'd say 66 or two thirds of the course. And these concepts are just a lot more tougher than a lot of the other things. I think this is kind of the first time in, um, in science classes that you've seen such a STEM heavy uh, uh, kind of topic, I feel like, because a lot of your, your middle school days and elementary school days are learning things about like tectonic plates and just things about more memorization. And honors biology really uh, is a kick in the butt sometimes because you've got to know how to kind of apply these concepts. And a lot of times they're preparing you for that AP exam or that AP class for AP biology. And so there's some FRQs in there and that class can tend to be just a little bit difficult, especially considering you're a freshman and you're kind of just new to everything. And honors chemistry, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the tough category. So this is gonna vary by a lot of high schools, honestly, but typically chemistry is really tough because they're trying to prepare you for AP chemistry, which is notoriously known to be one of the like top five, top three, or arguably the hardest AP course. And so by preparing you to take this, obviously this class is gonna be pretty tough. And honestly, what makes this class so tough is things like significant figures or sig figs and kind of that um, wrapped with the difficulty of the class. So the class is already difficult, but having to be good at math, having to know your rounding, know your significant figures, um, and, and not make any simple mistakes in your math, on top of the content itself being difficult, is what makes this class so, so tough. Especially as a sophomore, this is probably one of the more difficult classes, one of the most difficult classes you're taking as an underclassman, as a ninth or 10th grader, honestly. Though some people did find it a little bit easier, I will say, but, but in general, it's definitely gonna be in that tough category. Now, Honors Algebra 2, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the mid category. It's definitely a step up from Algebra 1 and Geometry. However, it's just not as tough as Honors Chemistry, though it is kind of tough to make a cross interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary um, uh, kind of comparison there from science to math. But, but typically, Algebra 2 is not as tough as some of the, the other uh, math courses that you're gonna take later on. You're still dealing with a lot of the same stuff you've dealt with in Algebra 1, right? You're still dealing with some linear equations, some quadratics, um, but you're just kind of adding some newer functions that you haven't seen before. But for the most part, they're easy, except typically logs um, and e to the power of x's tend to be a little bit tougher, but still gonna be in the mid category, not too, too terrible. Now, Honors Pre-Calculus, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the Consider Dropping category. 
Personally, I think this is the dip most difficult class that, that most people will take. Um, as an underclassman, or most people take this as juniors or seniors, really. And, and the fact that this is an honors class that you're taking as a junior or senior, I think, speaks for itself, um, that it's, it's pretty difficult. Um, and so while a lot of people did find this class somewhat not 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 bad, those are ten, those people tend to be people who are really putting in a lot of work in pre-calc. And I think that can be said for almost anyone. Unless you're some sort of like really big genius, you've got to put in an effort for pre-calc. I've seen people who have kind of slid by in Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2 without really putting in much effort. But with pre-calc, with, you know, things like trigonometry, knowing your unit circle, and yeah, the the, the, the addition of the unit circle is just a whole new realm in, in mathematics that you haven't dealt with before. And so I think conceptually for a lot of people, this class tends to be very tough because of that and so yeah i mean it's a, it's a whole new realm of mathematics to a lot of people um and again you're gearing up for one of the hardest ap classes um th that that most people would agree on ap calculus bc or ab either way they're both pretty difficult classes arguably so it's i personally put that in the consider dropping category but again it's all subjective i've seen some people that would put in the tough category but it is generally known to be very very tough now, Honors English 1, I'm going to go ahead and put in the mid category. So the thing with English is that it tends to be pretty subjective. It's not like the rest of the courses we rated so far that are mostly like multiple choice based or, you know, if you know the content, you know the content and you'll do well type of classes. And a lot of times English 1 is, it's a lot of writing, right? And so it's a lot of subjectivity to it. And sometimes there's a lot of presentation skills. And so if you're good at like giving presentations and you're good at being persuasive, you're good at writing, you're good at defending yourself um, with your arguments. I think that's a really big piece of, of English that's different from middle school English is it's a lot about defending yourself. Not just defending yourself, but defending a point of view in your essay. Um, you're used to a lot more expository type of work, I think, in elementary middle school, but that, that's kind of the biggest change here in English. Um, and the reason why it's not any easier this is honestly, again, that subjectivity piece. A lot of times, this is not to a blow to any English teachers because I totally understand this method, but it's like, they don't want to give you like the 100 or they don't want to give you the 98 or 99 because there's always something to improve, right? Even if you have full grammatical correctness um, and overall the storyline, the plot, whatever you're writing makes sense, there's always something to improve, right? Like if you gave this piece of work that you've written to, I don't know, the number one you know, Nobel Prize winner in literature, I'm sure he or she would have something to add. And so that for that reason, it tends to be a little bit tougher than I think some people um, would like it to be. Now, under Spanish 3, I'm going to go ahead and put in the mid category as well. You're gearing up to take AP Spanish, which is not, it's kind of a mid kind of AP course in terms of difficulty, maybe a little bit on the tougher end. Um, it's not too bad. It's not too easy. I think it's just really right in the middle here. You've taken two years of Spanish, and so I think by this point, you've already gauged whether you're going to be good at Spanish or not. And so I think that's so great about this class is the people who take this class are really either like native speakers or they know that they're going to be good in this class or they know they're going to succeed. And so I think as long as you're making the right decision to take this class based on your previous experience in Spanish, I think you should be in good hands here. Now, Honors English 2, I'm going to go ahead and put in the mid category as well. I feel like the thing with English is it actually doesn't seem to get that much harder down the road um, than compared to like algebra um, and pre-calc, right? Like within three years of taking math, I bumped this from light work to consider dropping. Um, it's not to say that English doesn't get harder. It, it definitely does. But I think the, the, the curve of you adjusting and learning is a lot better than the curve of the class getting harder because English 2 is really just a build off of English 1. It's more defending, it's more written work, it's more presentations, it's a lot of the same stuff you, you've seen. And so by taking Honors English 1 your freshman year, you're just very acquainted to succeed in the class, I feel like, so it's it's not bad. And uh, finally, Honors Computer Science 1, I'm going to go ahead and put in the light work category. So the way this is formatted at a lot of high schools is that you take Honors Computer Science 1, and then you take AP Computer Science A. Now, this is, might be different from, from some high schools, but... Because of that, the Honors Computer Science 1 course doesn't cover as much content, I think, as a lot of other of these courses. Because, uh, for example, at my high school, what we did was we had half of the AP CSA content covered in this class, and then half of it covered in the AP CSA class. So we were essentially going at half the pace um, that we should have. Now, again, that'll vary by high school, but typically those concepts, those introductory Computer Science 1 concepts are pretty, pretty easy. We're talking about learning how to code from scratch. You're gonna start, typically your teachers will start with something called Hello World. Um, by the time you do that and you look back on it, you'll, you'll realize why I kind of have a smirk um, on my face talking about this. It's uh, kind of a nostalgic kind, kind of thing anyways. Um, but the, the coding you do in this class is very introductory. You're not doing anything typically with like classes and objects which tends to complicate things. Um, you're dealing with like 1D arrays, 
I think the 1D, even if you don't know what an array is, kind of speaks for itself. It's not too, too terrible. And it's just a lot of introductory concepts that in comparison to later computer science courses, it tends to be a little bit easier. And so with that, I'm going to put a wrap to this tier list ranking for all the honors classes typically offered at US high schools. Uh, comment below if you're, you know, your school offers a different honors class that's not put on here. I tried to keep this as um, focused to most US high schools, um, you know, that the most these are classes the most US high schoolers uh, have access to, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I hope this tier list was fun for y'all and you got a little break from your studying to hear this out. And comment below if you guys have any video ideas um, for me to cover. Make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button to stay tuned for future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.